Hey, how you doing there, folks? So Zach Perry back here with 45 Home Lab, and we have some exciting news in the virtualization world. Proxmox has released Proxmox PBE9, and they've also released Proxmox Backup Server PBS4. And each one of those come with some releases that are in the same vein, like they are both on Debian 13 or Trixie, and that ZFS 2.3.3 is now released for both, meaning that you can dynamically add one single drive per VDEV, so it makes things like updating or adding uh, storage um, incrementally a lot more cost effective, a lot easier. But let's go into some of the things that are different between the two here. So first things first, let's go over the PBE9 release. So it goes over all the good things here. For any of our hyperconverged Ceph uh, users out there, you can now do Squid or Ceph 19 right out of the box. So next we have snapshots for thick provisioned LVM shared storage. So used to be tied to your storage's native features. So in Proxmox 9, uh, snapshots can be implemented as volume change and think of them as sort of like layers that the base disk sits on the bottom and each of the uh, each snapshot is a layer that only stores the the differences or the um, the deltas next is the sdn stack so previously if you want dynamic routing so spinely full mesh uh, for ceph or an evpn underlay man there's a lot of acronyms <laughs> you were uh, wiring up routing by hand, fabrics give you Proxmox managed, uh, routed layer redundancy, and automatic failover uh, using Open Fabric or OSPF. Now, full disclosure, have not used either of these, so I can't speak too highly or too in depth on what uh, uh, what we can do with them on a uh, on an actual production level. But they are one of those things that I cannot wait to get more involved with, see what I can do with them, and then. Uh, pound my head against my keyboard and figure out why I can't get this network to route properly. That's what heroes do. But that's a me problem and probably still some people out there. But So before uh, you'd have bridges and VLANs which were easy but dynamic routing meant you know manual configs. Now you define a fabric in the GUI slash API and you can let Proxmox handle the peering, the routes, failover, etc. Then another thing that is going to be for clusters that is affinity rules in high availability uh, cluster. So affinity rules in high availability HA clusters has gotten a lot smarter uh, with those set affinity rules. So now you can tell Proxmox which VMs you should stay, which should stay together uh, for low latency or apart for you know, well, fault tolerance. And so, you know, you can keep um, things together like an app VM and a DB VM uh, that are on the same node, but cut query latency keep separate so two identical apps uh, VMs must never land on the same node so that way there you always have some sort of high availability redundancy so something doesn't go down if a node fails you don't have two things on the same node or run into some sort of contention issue what have you so you shape the placement to match the apps topology uh, not the other way around and availability so Proxmox 9 is now fully available I actually updated my own single server at home to Proxmox 9. Um, ran into a bit of an issue because I decided to do it right in the shell of Proxmox itself, not in a VNC or anything like that. So it ended up severing the connection. Uh, then I had to go into my IPMI log uh, system and redo the whole thing. So that was a fun experiment. But um, yeah, if uh, you do do that, just make sure that you um, have a way that you're constantly inside of it, whether that be IPMI, no VNC, etc. Now let's talk about Proxmox Backup 4. So a lot of similar things, Debian 13, Trixie, uh, live RAID Z expansion, so because of um, ZFS 2.3.3, but the big one here that is um, um, really getting people's attention, one that I'm really interested in, is the support for S3 compatible object storage. So this makes things like Offsite data de, blah, blah, blah. that makes things like offsite disaster recovery very easy, very straightforward. You can even upload this up to Wasabi, Amazon, AWS, or if you have an on-prem cloud, let's say you have a Ceph cluster uh, that's a separate piece of hardware, either on-site or at a different location, you can actually upload to that, and it makes sure that everything is secure on-prem, and you know, uh, make sure that you can recover if need be. Now. 
One last thing that'll cover, one other thing, Proxmox uh, PVS4, also available now, same as PVE9. Don't have an instance of that in my home lab environment. Um, not best practice, but one of those things that uh, now I can actually do, get on the latest and greatest. And the last thing we'll cover is something small. It's been around for quite a while, and that's the Proxmox UI uh, mobile app. So not something that I've used really at all. Um, I know it does have a place, but it's been majorly overhauled uh, compared to what I had looked at in 2023, maybe late 2022. I think it was around the time it may have been released. Don't quote me on that. But um, yeah, it has dramatically changed. It's a lot cleaner, a lot more responsive, uh, quality of life improvements on it. But there is, so I would say that's just about everything for what is available in Proxmox 9 and Proxmox Backup Server 4. Now, this is a very, very, very high level overview. Um, I can't wait to actually get more in depth and be able to speak with um, more experience, more authority on each one of these things in some future videos there. But this is one of those things that I wanted to kind of just speak on, um, get the news out there. Not that people don't already know this, but it is one of those things that I would love to hear uh, from you all in the comments there. Are you going to be updating to Proxmox 9? You're gonna be holding off because of anything that, you know, might potentially uh, cause a break in your system, or you just like to stay back a version or so, do you use something else like XCPNG? So if you wanna see everything else we have on offer, head on over to store.45homelab.com. Down in the bottom are our social media posts, tabs, uh, pages, whatever you wanna call them. I'm old. You know, I'm 1500 years old. Uh, so <laughs> with, that, with that said, I'll see y'all next time. Um, Hope to see you back. What do you want to see in some future videos regarding Proxmox, maybe with uh, PBE9, PBS? Uh, again, let me know. See you all again. See you now. Hey, buddy. Oh, I am. I'm ancient. 32. Yeah, I feel 90.